Oh, no. Welcome to Game On. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter C and the number four. Nice, like C4 because we're explosive. No, no, I've just been watching loads of Sesame Street. That's lame. Lame? Oscar the Grouch. Coming up this week. You are? Revolution, not evolution, as we preview Deus Ex. Nats has a health scare in the Apple store. Dan finds out what it's like to be a Jedi. And invaders from outer space on, on the, the big, big screen. screen. That's exciting. It is. First up, it's been seven years, seven years, Dan, since the last Deus Ex game. And 11 years, 11, 11 years, Nat. 11 years. Since the epically critically acclaimed original. Now, the next instalment is just around the corner, so let's take a look at what's in store. And if we can expect a revolution in gaming. We managed that far without that joke. Must you? Yeah. Must you, Dan? It's clever. It's not clever. Deus Ex Human Revolution has already been delayed from February this year to late August, which means the hype and anticipation has had that little bit longer to build up. The game is essentially a prequel to the first Deus Ex, set in the year 2027. You play as Adam Jensen, a security officer for a company called Sarif Industries, who specialise in making human augmentations. <laughs> I know what I'd have augmented. I knew you'd laugh at that. You're so immature, Dan. No, no, no. My ears. So I could hear everything, then maybe use them to fly. Useful. Well, these biomechanical body upgrades end up saving Jensen's life after he's critically injured when his company is attacked. It doesn't sound like a very good security officer then, does well, he? Well, presumably he is after he's augmented. That's the point. You yeah. should augment your brain, not your ears. It's at this point that Mr. Jensen begins to investigate the conspiracy surrounding augmentation and the game begins to unfold. But just how the game unfolds will be up to you. The original Deus Ex set a precedent back at the turn of the millennium by combining the key elements of an RPG, a first-person shooter and an all-round action-adventure game. And Human Revolution looks like it'll carry on this practice with what the developers at Eidos Montreal, Montreal. Montreal, Montreal. Montreal are calling their pillars of gameplay. You will be able to rely on combat Beating people up with your fancy mechanical arms and other weapons. Stealth. Sneaky, sneaky. Hacking. Not like Lull's sec, this is more picking locks and disabling gun turrets. Exploration. Taking the scenic route. And social. Flirting with the ladies. Well, manipulating them to do your bidding. Yeah, flirting. Bidding. <laughs> These gameplay modes won't be strictly separated though, there'll be a nice amount of overlap. Yeah, like you might fail to hack something properly, get yeah. caught and have a fight on your hands. As well as this open-ended gameplay, we can also expect a similarly rich and deep story to look forward to that will hopefully match the original game. But what is going to be new and improved, a bit like those Swiss Army knife excuses for arms Adam Jensen sports throughout the game? For starters, the AI of your enemies will be vastly improved. See, brain augmentations, what I was saying before. Yes, well, you'll have to hide the bodies you left behind or risk being spotted. As well as this, each enemy squad will have a leader. Take him out and the rest of them will run around like headless chickens. Or leaderless enemies. That's more literal. <laughs> This, on the one hand, shows off their lack of coordination without an identifiable superior. But on the other, it could prove quite dangerous, as a headless chicken could be one mean piece of poultry. You've extended the metaphor too far, Dan. Human Revolution will be the first Deus Ex game to use a regenerating health meter, or RHM. Yeah, it's something that seems to be a modern trend in gaming. Sometimes it makes things all too easy, but sometimes it is a welcome relief. Developers, of course, have argued they don't want players trawling back through levels in search of health backs before continuing. Yeah, they say that this could slow the pace of the game and cause it to lose its flow. If only things were so simple in real life and I didn't have to venture to the chemists for medicine whenever I get a cold. You could just man up. I don't want to hurt you, but I will if you don't give me a choice. All in all, Human Revolution looks like it'll be exactly what Deus Ex fans have been waiting for. It also looks visually stunning and hopefully won't disappoint in either its technical areas or its plot. For those new to the franchise, expect to immerse yourself. Expect to be a bit confused, but expect one hell of a gripping experience. Deus Ex Human Revolution is out in the UK on the 26th of August.
Now, you're a Mac, aren't you? I am, yeah. You're, of course, a PC. No, no, no. I, nerdy. I don't really think we have to label ourselves in really? today's modern society. Are you sure no. you just don't think you're a little bit less cool than me? You less know cool. You are. No, 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 no. Look, less just because cool. I'm not a sheep, you oh, and all your gosh. eye losers. Apple, eye losers, wow. Apple, Apple products can't do everything, you know. Can't they, Dan? Roll VT. Apple are slowly taking over the world with their sexy slimline devices. We already know you can make calls on them, play games on them. Now apparently you can ride a bike on them and go to the hospital on them. We don't understand either. That's why we're here to find out. There's over 425,000 applications in our app store. Every time we think there's an app for everything, which there seems to be, somebody comes up with something we haven't thought of. It's absolutely incredible, and we'd love to show you some of those today. Go ahead. What you'll see here is a beautiful speedometer, so a very visual way. You can take a very quick glance and see how fast you're going. Quick glance is a key, surely, because if I get too involved, I don't want to start checking my email. Exactly. Well, okay. <laughs> using that built-in GPS technology from the iPhone okay. shows you where we are. Here we are in the Covent Garden Apple Store. Indeed. Not going anywhere. Not going anywhere. No. We don't want to run into our customers in the store. You can customize this. And there's also add-on accessories that you can add to this iBike, for example, a heart rate monitor. Well, I can see I've already burnt five and a half calories. So <laughs> Way to go. I'm just going to go up and have a Go have dish. a good English breakfast. Definitely. <laughs> Basically, they've created a case that you can put your iPhone in, right into. Yeah. And then this case can, can just snap right on to any golf club, really. Okay. And what it will do is actually analyze your golf strokes, your putting strokes. Excellent. We're seeing some great accessories come out in the kind of health and fitness space that we wanted to show you today. All right, so just go ahead and step on the scale. Okay. Yep, it's on. Now this is the point where, you know, in the olden days, you would go and scramble around for a piece of paper to write this down. So there you go, right away. And you can see a graph of your weight trending over time. Okay. Why don't we have a seat? We can yes. see how you do after a bike ride. The app actually recognizes that I just plugged in an accessory. Go to your happy place. Well, there you go. You pass with flying colors. So I'm playing an iPad 2 connected to an HDTV against somebody on an iPod Touch. And it's, it's impressive that the signal, this HD signal is coming just from this little flat handheld device. Genuinely impressive, genuinely impressive. Well then, didn't you look dignified, I having did. your blood pressure taken by an iPad? Very cool. Yeah, and we all caught a glimpse of your weight there. It's probably a good thing you were on that bike for quite a while. Listen, you can joke all you like. I'm always willing to just, I mean, you know, comedy has no vanity. I'm willing to look a bit foolish for the sake of game on, for the good. I, for don't, the I, don't, I, don't, really, I don't really agree with you on that. Don't you, Dan? Don't you? Roll VT. Connect Star Wars could be a big title for anyone who's ever wanted to test their midichlorian count, but will the force be strong with the game itself? Microsoft's Andy Lee told us where it fits in the Star Wars universe. The actual story of the uh, timeline is set just after Episode 2, so it's in the middle of the Clone Wars and all that kind of stuff kicking off. Um, uh, however, it does take references from all six movies. Look at the damage it did. It's going to be packed full of loads of characters that you know and love or hate, depending on who you are and then and who they are. How do I? Oh, okay. nice. One hand controls the force and the other your lightsaber. That is fun. That is really fun. It's actually like having the force. It's a simple enough combo to pick up and is admittedly satisfying. It's going to be one of those things where, you know, you're sat there at the kitchen table or something, you're like, I need the salt. That wasn't luck. That was, that was skill. <laughs> It's always going to disappoint me though, because I can't actually do a backflip or anything like that. <laughs> From a galaxy far, far away to the place where dreams are apparently made, Disneyland Adventure puts you in the park and is something of a first for Kinect, as Frontier Development's David Braben explained. It's the first Kinect game that features open world navigation, where you can wander around the whole 86 acres of Disneyland in California and have a great time meeting Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck and all the other Disney characters. But rather than simply being a virtual reality theme park, there's a trippy twist. You do things like play giant croquet in Wonderland and fly over London with Peter Pan, which is what I decided to try. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, children, do not try and fly over the Thames. <laughs> Crashed into a few chimneys, but got through in the end. Connect Sports is heading into its second season and that means a whole host of new events. Rare's lead designer George Andreas filled us in and told us about the game. Six different sports this time around. Uh, we have baseball, have American football, we have darts, uh, we have uh, golf, tennis. I'm trying to remember the one and it's gone from the top of my mind. What was it? Skiing and darts, that was it, yes. There you go, more sports than he can even remember. Um, we have new features such as improved skeletal tracking, which basically means your actions are being mirrored a lot more accurately this time around. We can do sports that we weren't able to do with the first one, such as darts or golf, as you've just seen for yourself today. It's going to be very difficult to go back and play any other type of physical experience. Not so sure he's right about that. I really couldn't resist Dance Central 2. Now, we've talked a bit in recent weeks about game-to-film adaptations. We can't actually stop talking about them. But the latest sounds like it could be the best one yet. Is it something with epic visuals, a gripping story and outlandish characters? Yes. Well, its visuals were epic when it first came out. The storyline tried and tested. Classic as you like. As for the characters, well, all we really know is the baddies are called Space Invaders. First released in the year of our Lord 1978, Space Invaders has gone down in gaming history as one of the top arcade titles of all time. It inspired and influenced dozens of games after Literally it. Literally dozens. Literally, and its imagery can be seen everywhere in modern culture, from t-shirts to episodes of Futurama. Now, it's got its own film. Now, how on earth would this work? We hear you cry. How on earth would this work? He cried. Well, to be fair, it is one solitary tank fending off attacks from waves and waves of aliens with a few measly blocks for a barricade. It still sounds more intelligent than a lot of the stuff coming out of Hollywood these days. I mean, did you see Green Lantern? Wow. I know, right? I now feel like we should apologise to Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, it's really probably. nice. Sorry, Ryan. I almost barfed. Of course, it would seem if anyone's going to be able to convert the most famous pixels in the world to the silver screen, it will be the producers Lorenzo di Bonaventura and Gigi Pritzka. Yeah, and they've produced some films that are about as cool as their names sound. Yeah, Lorenzo is apparently working also on an Asteroids adaptation, bringing another retro classic to the screen. He's also previously worked on the Transformers trilogy, of course. Yeah, well, the first one was good. After that... Bumblebee kind of lost his buzz. And G.I. Joe, The Rise of the Cobra. When all else fails, we don't. You said these films were cool. They are cool. That's Rise of the Cobra. Ah, I was just starting to have some respect for you. Ouch. This is General Hawk. Mission is a go. It's still early days yet, and the pair of producers are reportedly now looking for a writer to pen the script. And whoever gets that job is bound to have a difficult task on their hands. What with the complexity of the plot? Aliens invade the Earth, people defend the Earth. Come on, it's just War of the Worlds without the added confusion of Tom Cruise. It's really nice. Of course, we will bring you updates on the classic cinematic imaginings when they appear. Now, though, as it seems, any and every game can be adapted for the big screen. We're really hoping for a movie based on Frogger. <laughs> And finally, we think it's time to take a brief tour of the Game On Gallery. We do think it's time. It's been a while since we showcased some of your art, but we do love your pictorial efforts and think they deserve some recognition. So let's take a look at the masterpieces that have been flooding our Facebook wall. Or flooding in a bad way. No. Flooding in an excellent way. Continuing our Replicate the Game on logo theme, George Hall gave us photographic evidence that Master Chief's a fan. And Ross Clark has made the promising start to a Game on Little Big Planet level. Game on regular Glenn Gregory showed off his prototype for the PS4. If the future console is half as good as this, we're certainly going to be pleased. I'd buy it, Glenn. And then there's this. Ludicrous. You are not taller than me. I know. Look. I know. It's ridiculous. I just don't know why you were drawn with long hair and a necklace. That's the mystery for me. Good, though. 
That's all for this week. But remember, if we haven't forcibly been round to your house to make you like our Facebook page, you can prevent us from appearing on your doorstep by going to facebook.com forward slash game on TV and clicking the like button. Now, we're off to pen the script to a movie about Deus Ex, then realise it's too complicated and switch to everyone's favourite mobile game, Snake. Been done. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brilliant. More gaming grandiose ideas next week. Tell me, are you with me? Are you with me? It's Craig David. Does he still uh, exist? You play as Adam Jensen, a security officer. Adam Jensen. Don't know why I said it like that. You play as Adam Jensen. <laughs> Mechanical ears. With what the developers at... Uh-oh. Montreal. Montreal. No, I'm saying Montreal. 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 Eidos. By Toyota. Oh. Flirting with the ladies. The ladies. Sounds really sex pasty, that, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I was going for my sex best voice. I, I slide into it very naturally. <laughs> it's worrying. <laughs> There'll be a nice amount of overlap. Just yeah. the right amount. Yeah. A nice amount. Yeah. Not too much, not too little. Yeah. Just like the amount of milk I like in my tea. But what is going to be improved and in new? <laughs> and in nude. <laughs> well, it does seem that this seems to... <laughs> <laughs> Dan finds out what it's like... Dan fa... Oh, my days. <laughs> it's a very simple name it's to say. It's really easy. You know that you're slightly less cool than me and you don't want to say it out loud. I don't remember what I wrote after that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> is it something with epic visuals, a gripping storyline and... Ah. And... Land? What? Like those, oh no, they're Space Raiders, the crisps. You know, excited about Space Raiders. So, so, I want some Space Raiders now. Are they still 10B? No. Pickled Onion. Pickled Onion. And Gigi Pitzka. <laughs> <laughs> Gigi Pritzka. <laughs> okay. Gigi Pritzstick. You said these thil the films, these no, films the, were cool. Be, I didn't Man, say you just be, lied. Man, you said these films were cool. Man. Man. Man, you said these films were cool. <clears throat> uh.